going, going, going. This is all yeah. <laughs> We'll have a blue <laughs> Christmas <laughs> with all of you. And that's all I have. <laughs> Welcome everybody to Yoga. I didn't even tell these people that I was going to be so cheesy. <laughs> I come up with that as I was driving up the hill. <laughs> Welcome everybody, I'm Gina and I'm here tonight with Sarah and Christina and Rachel who are going to take you around the world of blues. Adieu, enjoy the blue. <laughs> Welcome everyone. Um, Gina is on the chat tonight if you have any questions for us. So she'll be fielding the questions and we'll be answering them to the best of our abilities. And if we don't know, so sorry. <laughs> but tonight, what are we going to be eating, Christina? Blue cheese, yay. <laughs> Christina's favorite type of cheese. Yes. If you haven't seen our other episodes, it always comes up at least once that blue cheese is not my most favorite cheese, but as a cheesemonger, I do appreciate blue cheese. It's a cheese first, it's a blue second. So let's just, let's jump into it. Let's just We're proud of you for this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So You're being brave. Like, thank you. Sacrifice. <laughs> so on your plate to this evening, we have five cheeses. So in this corner with the square piece, this is going to be your gorgonzola dolce, your top left. Top left. And then we have a darker yellow triangle in the top right, which is Stilton. And then in the middle is a triangle, which will be Shaft's blue. And then in your bottom left is Roquefort. It's also another triangle. And then in the bottom right is another kind of rectangle square that is going to be Valdion. So different variety of flavors, which we'll see. And we included a bunch of accoutrements because this is a very strong flavored cheese. So, yes. So we got chocolate covered <laughs> Kikos on the top. We got uh, pomegranate seeds. We got golden raisins, apricot, um, Gordal olives down here, uh, fig almond cake, um, some more chocolate, and then a little lemon Italian cookies. Am I missing anything? Oh, oh and honeycomb. Honeycomb. Honeycomb, yes. We also have the port with Stilton. Oh, yes, and you'll notice the little cup. It wasn't on my plate, sorry. <laughs> and this is Stilton with port, which we'll go more into in a little bit. So just keep in mind, like with stronger blues, you're gonna want something sweet, like the chocolate or the honey. And with the milder blues, um, something savory, like the mustard or the olives go really well. And I think we're ready to go into the first stop. We're going to Italy. Gorgonzola. <laughs> Should we talk about what we're drinking? Oh, yeah, sorry. I was eager. Sorry. <laughs> you love the blues. See? I'm yeah, so excited. So, what's this little glass? Oh, first? yeah. All right. Well, I have prepared a martini for the blue tasting because martinis go really well with blue cheese. A lot of people come and get our Gordal olives and we stuff them with blue cheese, usually uh, St. Agur, which is not on this plate, but which is very good. Um, and this is a gin martini with um, a little bit of olive juice, so a dirty martini, which goes really well with this. Ooh, so cheers. Cheers. I'm excited. cheers. And look at these coupe glasses. Ooh, we, I love mean, a, we love coupe. We love a coupe. <laughs> what else are we drinking? Yeah, we're having some <laughs> There's champagne. There's a lot going on here. We need it for the blue cheese. We do. We were talking the other day about pairing, you know, Rachel's like, what wine are we going to have with the blue cheese? And we're kind of spoiled over here. We love bubbles, like everyday bubbles. Like, no matter what we want, <laughs> are eating or whatever, we want bubbles at the end of the day. And so I was like, of course we're having bubbles. And she's like, no, bubbles doesn't go with blue cheese. And I was like, Try I did, it. I said that. So she tried it with the rope and she's like, dang it, Sarah, it's delicious. <laughs> We have to do bubbles, and so that's what we have tonight. I didn't believe her because usually you would pair like a sweet dessert wine, like a sauterne or something like that, um, or a like heavy red, like a cab. So yeah. I was like, there is no way that bubbles are going to go well with this, but I was wrong. And we so can be good. wrong, and that's okay. Yeah, <laughs> but in this case, we're not. Correct. <laughs> All right, back to Gorgonzola. Here we go. Gorgonzola is from Italy. It uses unskimmed pasteurized cow's milk, and it is one of the oldest blue vein cheeses. It dates back to 879 AD, though they say the blue veins didn't appear until the 11th century. Um, <laughs> legend has it. Is it still called Gorgonzola? Even with all the blue? I couldn't get a clear answer, so don't ask that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I guess if they have a record of Gorgonzola mm -hmm. before it was blue, then it was still called yeah. Gorgonzola. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we could talk about white Stilton versus blue Stilton later, so, you know. Oh man, sorry, sorry. <laughs> getting excited. That's why we have two drinks. Okay. <laughs> um, so legend has it that a young cheesemaker had left his job to go visit his lover at night. And when he came back in the morning, he forgot that he had left the overnight curds out. 
So he didn't want to lose his job, so he just tried to mix it with the morning curds. And then as it started to age, it wouldn't um, get firm. It stayed soft. And so he's freaking out, decides to pierce it, thinking the holes will dry out the cheese. But instead, mold started to grow inside of the holes in the cheese. And then it ended up being an actual good thing, allegedly. So we'll see. <laughs> um, so Gorgonzola is more of a softer, milder of all the blues. Uh, there's two different types, Dolce and Picante. Today we're having Dolce. It's from the company um, Igor Gorgonzola. Um, and this one is like their premium line Gorgonzola. So it's top notch. It's the Leonardi family, four generations. Um, and it's naturally lactose free. And the company, this cheese is the first cheese, I gotta get the name of the company right here, okay. It's the first cheese certified lactose free and approved by the Italian Association for Lactose Intolerance. <laughs> oh. I didn't know there was such a thing, so. That's this fun. is, let me pull up the quarter wheel off screen here. This is a big old quarter wheel of the cheese. They use 180 farms to get their milk from, and the Gorgonzola industry is worth $8 million, I believe, and they make over 5 million wheels of cheese a year. Wow. It's probably oh, 800, 800 million. million. Yeah, 800 million. million. <laughs> I lied. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. Oh, they're, it's mostly made in Piedmont and Lombardy, and do you guys like it? I like it more. I like it. Bread. I mean, I've tried it before when it comes it's in and tastes so. it just on a spoon, and it's it's just too sweet for my preference. I do like blue cheese. Mm -hmm. um, that's going to be the most fun experiment of the evening because we like it, and she doesn't. <laughs> but I like it better with the martini actually because it's so it's saltier, so uh -huh. it gives it like the saltier taste. Mm -hmm. well, let me try it because um, I'm usually not a gorgonzola fan either. Mm -hmm. What do you think? It's mild. It's not too bad. Um, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. <laughs> um, I think it would be really good with like something sweet. I'm gonna try. You want to up the sweetness? And I said the yes. opposite. I yeah. Tried, I tried yeah. it with the cranberry or the cherry, and I really yeah. liked it. Oh, you did. Oh, so I'm you went with okay. honey I'll have to try it with something sweet I don't sweet love too. sweet cheese. Like I love blue cheese for its saltiness. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't put honeycomb on cheese ever because that's just not my personal preference. I know it's like the perfect pairing, yeah. blue cheese and honeycomb, but I just don't love it. See, I don't really like it with the cherry. Really? See, everybody has their own feelings <laughs> and that's okay. There's no yeah. right and wrong, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even though I'm right and you're wrong. <laughs> I think I like it with the honey because it masks the taste. <laughs> yeah. And here we are. Here we are. Um, so all blue cheese is pretty much made um, in a similar fashion. So you have your milk, you add the cultures, you add the rennet, and then they add the blue mold powder. Um, oh, it's a powder? Um, or a liquid, it depends, that's okay. different ones. Um, and then it goes through the whole process, it goes through where it starts to occur, they separate it, and then they put it in the hoop to shape it, and then it starts to firm up a little bit. And then what they do is they'll salt it by hand all around, and then after about five to six days, they pierce it. And this is really important with the blue cheeses because blue cheese, these molds that they introduce, there's two main types. There's um, Penicillium roqueferti and Penicillium glaucum, and they need oxygen to grow. And so when you pierce the cheese, the oxygen gets in, and that's what allows it to do its thing. Because so. I feel like a lot of people think that the piercing is actually when they put the blue mold in, when they put the penicillium in, but mm -hmm. that's not true, like yeah. you just said. Yeah. You put it in beforehand, and the piercing is simply to let the oxygen in. And one of the reasons why they wrap it in foil, I'm sure you're going to get to this, I just got excited. Yeah, yeah, go, go, um, go. <laughs> Is to allow oxygen to still get in the cheese, mm -hmm. but you need to wrap it, unlike some other cheese, like the Stilton, which we'll get to, which has a natural rind, mm -hmm. um, to increase moisture retention and avoid dehydration. So they wrap it in the foil, and one of the worst things you can do for blue cheese, of course, now we have these blues in plastic wrap, but we only keep them there for like one or two days because we sell through them so fast, so mm -hmm. it's fine. But if you have it in your fridge, don't wrap it in plastic wrap because it needs uh, oxygen. Yes, yes. And keep it away from your other cheeses, too, because if you keep mm -hmm. it too close to your other cheeses, eventually that will turn into blue cheese, too, which is kind of interesting. 
So I didn't know the oxygen thing. You know, I'm still learning all these things from Christina from our Fromage with Friends. <laughs> but I had done an Instagram post, I don't know, a couple months ago on the Venissimo Instagram of a picture of mine shaft. This one, you, you can both sides look the same. But I had just cut into it, and on one side, the blue mold was like more golden and light and not blue at all. And then on the old piece, it was like this dark blue. And so it just, mm. over time, the oxygen yeah. gives it that blue color. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's really cool. I love it. I love learning all these little. This is why I like a book. <laughs> More education. Ladies, a oh. friend online named H said they accidentally dipped the chocolate with the Gorgonzola yes. Dolce. All right, worth a try. You know how we already feel about these chocolate Kikos. <laughs> yeah, we talked about it in our last class. <laughs> We're like 50-50 on the chocolate Kikos. Do I love like them. them. Gina loves not? them, right? Gina. Okay, Gina loves them. They don't like them. I'm it's okay. Mm, I like it with the blue cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's good. Mm-hmm. Ooh, I'm going to take a sip of the martini. Oh, yeah. Okay. Triple throw. Every time someone takes a sip, they should not take a sip. <laughs> and it's important to know that the mold oh. isn't harmful because it's not um, growing in conditions that makes it release toxins. So, so what if you have a penicillin allergy? You can still eat blue cheese. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, it's two different strains. I don't know the right words, but it's not. We're not doctors. We're curdologists, not scientists. It's okay. <laughs> I love it. Um, so the blue cheese will differ in flavor and texture depending on how long it's aged and the type of mold that's used. So for example, some gorgonzola companies will use the guacam, which makes it sweeter. This particular brand uses real fruity. Um, how does this one get sweeter? Is it just because gorgonzola is sweeter in general? In general. Yeah. yeah. Is it's it? It's younger. Okay. It's younger. Dolce's are going to be sweeter. That's probably why it's named Dolce because it's sweet. Got it. Papante is going to be, um, it's aged longer, so it's more firmer, stronger. Makes sense. Um, and the gorgonzola Dolce will be cut in these smaller, you want to point, I don't know if they can see it on camera. No. I keep pointing to it. So strong. Yeah. So it's wrapped in foil, <laughs> like she said, and it's in these smaller, they don't come in giant wheels because it's so soft and so delicate that it'll be a mess to work with if it was in a larger wheel. So, so they keep it small. Am I mistaken? Isn't there a gorgonzola crema ficado? Is that gorgonzola or is that something different? The one, the spoonable one? I think it's a form where you like that's literally take an ice cream just, scoop. Yeah. That's yeah. how they buy it. It's, it's like, amazing. But yeah, it's, it's kind of like if yeah, exactly. You just have the whole wheel and you just spoon it out. We used to sell it in tubs at Whole Foods. Like it is. Would you yeah. eat it, or is it more used for like recipes? No, eat it. Yeah, it's really sweet and it's just. It, like, I think it's like a step like right sauce. under mm -hmm. Dolce. Do you know what I mean? Like okay. it's so young that it's still liquidy. Mm -hmm. Dolce, their veins will also be blue, and Papante, their veins will be more green. I thought that was yeah, just because of the age. Mm -hmm. I don't think I've ever had the Papante. Have you? I yeah. Which do you it's, prefer? It's different. I like the picante because, yeah, I don't like the sweeter cheeses, but. Um, I mean, not like is a strong word. I will still eat this. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's aged a minimum of 50 days, but no more than three months, so no more than 90 days. And it's good to use in like, so the dolce will be good to use in like sauces or like um, cream. Blue baked, cheese dressing? Dressing, like, things like that. Like people put it in mac and cheese? Yes. And then oh. picante is what you would use like in a salad. You would crumble it up because it's more firm. Makes sense. Yeah. And then what wines would this pair best with? Red? Anything you like? I, for people you could do a sweet on sweet. So a sweeter wine and a sweeter cheese or like a more contrasting pair, like an acidic, bright, white. Mm. wine with oh, the sweeter cheese. So I like it with the bubbles. <laughs> but <laughs> if you had to drink something mm -hmm. else. <laughs> but I feel like I'd like it with a nice crisp white. Yeah. What are your feelings? Are you in? It's, <laughs> yeah. it's good. <laughs> it is and this Delicious. Is, this is the <laughs> mildest of the blues on our plate, for sure. Yes. People yes. talk about it as like a starter blue G cheese, gorgonzola. So mm -hmm. we're starting out. I mean, you already said this a little bit. It's hard to do a blue cheese tasting because your taste buds get... Yeah. Normally, you would taste blue cheese last. 
-hmm. So we tried to go in order from mildest to strongest, but you know, it's kind of a matter of opinion and so we'll see how this works. So make sure you eat a piece of I bread or cracker between. Yeah. Okay, sorry, exactly. sorry. No, no, We're no, reading no. each other's minds. No, no, yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> We're connected. Yes. So yeah, make sure the palate cleanser mm -hmm. in between each cheese so, is. What do we have next? If you guys want to talk about the Stilton and pour. Sure. Um, we should definitely taste the plain one first before the pork. Okay. Ones. But um, traditionally, around this time of year, you can buy Stilton soaked in pork in little crocks. Um, there were a couple years that we made them ourselves to sell the Stilton Crocs, and um, it's just super traditional this time of year. We have a customer who starts soaking her Christmas Stilton on Thanksgiving. So get her <laughs> piece of Stilton, start soaking it to eat on Christmas Eve. Um, the two are s things that you would pair together. You could drink port while you eat Stilton because the pairing is just perfect. It's super strong salty, um, just real bold flavor cheese, and then a sweet dessert wine. It's just, we wanted to try both. At first we were gonna just do the port with Stilton, mm -hmm. and then we forgot. <laughs> <laughs> and so we had just put the piece of regular Stilton, and we're like, you know what, this is even better, because we're gonna do both. Yeah. Yes. And so we made up a little cheese plate. We traded the guys next door at the wine shop for a bottle of port. <laughs> we did. And we, <laughs> then, so we have the little cup soap, soaked in port. So uh, oh, we'll try those after we try the next guy. I should have held this up beforehand too. It's like kind of the yellower it's one. It's a darker on the yellow, plate. yeah. Do, you, do we know why? Is it grass-fed cows or? Yes, so okay. we are now in England. Okay, we are in England, pasteurized cow smoke. It is named after the village of Stilton, but we'll get into it. Oh, it's I not made Stilton. in Stilton, which I is crazy. Um, it, is, it was made and sold uh, back in the 17th century, and it's known as the English Parmesan. It's so popular. Now, the village of Stilton was on, it's called the Great North Road, and it goes from like uh, London to Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. And um, so travelers would, oh wait, we're drinking, sorry. Every time you guys hear this, that. <laughs> oh, is that the rule? <laughs> yeah, I'll see. Okay. <laughs> um, so the travelers would stop in Stilton. They would buy cheese from this famous place called the Bell Inn. And it's this lady who, she didn't invent the cheese. You yeah, know, like her cheese. name was Elizabeth Scarbrow. I don't know how to pronounce that. I, you know, pron <laughs> pronunciation is not our strongest suit over here. But um, yeah, and apparently she started making this cheese off of a recipe that was called Lady Beaumont's Cheese Recipe, which I love. It's just like, where did that come from? Nobody knows. This is in like the 1700s, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so she started making this cheese and I guess she started selling it to the Bell Inn in Stilton, but she did not make it in Stilton. And so that's right. presumably where it got its name from yes. selling it at from, that inn? Yes, exactly. So as the popularity of Stilton grew, the surrounding area started to make it, and but the border, Stilton was outside of these borders. So there's three counties that make Stilton. It's a protected cheese. What are the three counties, Rachel? Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, and Leicestershire. Thank you, I couldn't see that. Um, <laughs> so, it, I think it's crazy that like, the cheese is named after a place it's not even made. It's so silly. And um, just for a fun thing, I did the certified cheese professional exam and that was a question. So, I don't think I'm supposed to share that, but you need that. Those silly things, <laughs> the three <laughs> counties that <laughs> Stilton is made in, that was something you had to know, so. Our viewer, La Lua O'Brien, loves blue with pears, suggested mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, that'd be really good. Mm -hmm. Or apples or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. apricots. Does anyone feel like their Stilton sitting under the rosemary was flavored by yes. the rosemary? Oh, well, we I know was, somebody over here <laughs> loves a rosemary. We'll eat the rosemary. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but I feel like... Is it time? <laughs> yes. I don't know if the Stilton just tastes like that or... It was sitting under it. Um, no, I just tasted it. I'm like, nope. this isn't as bad as I remember it being. <laughs> and I think it's because of the rosemary. I really like it. Yeah. All right, rosemary. I love Stilton. Stilton. Good to know. So the one that we're trying today is from Colston Bassett Dairy. And there's only six dairies that are allowed to make Stilton. And so this one is really, this dairy is special because it does everything the traditional method. Everything is done by hand. Um, so when they separate the curds and whey, they use these little flat kind of buckets just to skim up off the top, and that allows for the cheese to um, maintain the curd, it's like texture, and it allows the cheese to be more buttery and 
not like those manufactured steel tents. It's way more special. Um, it takes 16 gallons of fresh milk to produce one pound of steel tin. Wow. And we have a giant wheel of steel tin over here. Mm -hmm. oh, this is my uh Oh, here she goes. <laughs> Sarah's going to stand up and use her knees. Use your knees, Sarah. <laughs> yes, please. Here we go. Oh, God. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> and so it's... We'll cut it in half. Someone show them where we cut it in half. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's shorter when we sell it. There we go. <laughs> And they make 4 million liters of milk a year, which is crazy. Holy cow. That's what I wrote in my notes. <laughs> I thought that was fun. We also have a cheese called a holy cow, which is very fun. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, they make cheese seven days a week. That's 180 wheels of cheese a day. Yeah. And how is it? Did you try it? I haven't tried the port one yet, but I love plain Stilton. And Stilton is best yeah, at around about 12 weeks after made so so it's aged a little longer than the gorgonzola right because it has yes. that natural yes. rind it's, yes. it's, like it's still so young like yeah I, like four months yeah isn't it crazy how milk just turns into cheese guys <laughs> <laughs> no i mean like it is we yes. some rennet and like some cultures and here we are <laughs> here we are so when they make this particular cheese they uh so you know the milk rennet curds and then you put it in the hoop and it gets the shape um, they need to stop the mold growth during production, so before they pierce it, they want it to like cut off oxygen to it first. So what they do is they take it out of the hoop, they take a knife, and they scrape the sides, and this like blocks off all the oxygen. And yeah. then they age it a little bit longer, about maybe five or six more days, and then they pierce it. And then they, it's so cool because like it molds from the, the it blues from the inside out, so they'll check it and they'll take it, oh, is it a probe? Yeah, it's got an auger, I think, is it? Yeah. yeah, and they stick it in and they pull it out and you'll see where it's more blue inside than on the edge. And they're like, ah, oh, not ready yet. And they put it back and then they cover it up with their thumb. And they're like, just kidding. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I just think it's so, there's just so much thought put into it. Well, does anyone still have their whole piece of Stilton? I remember thinking it when Rachel held it up and now I can see it on your piece of Stilton. There's almost no blue veining towards the edge. Like yeah. you still mm -hmm. have your piece. Mm -hmm. Yeah, inside out. No, yeah. which is funny because normally we've talked about in other fromage with friends that it's like a bolder flavor closer to the rind, mm -hmm. which I'm not, I don't know the answer to this. I don't know if that's still the same for blue. Like if they're piercing more in the inside or with Stilton, like are we, is like the nose, the inner part more bold? I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. just do some testing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know what else I've noticed? So, so far, any different. Yeah. A lot yeah. of people think blue cheese is stinky. Yeah, so and that's I don't that's kind of something we talk about when people come in and they're like, What's your stinkiest cheese? And I'm like, Okay, are you asking for a blue cheese or are you asking for a washed rind stinky cheese? And they're like, What are you talking about? <laughs> and so to us, at least in the cheese world, stinky means a wash rind cheese, like a cheese that is literally washed in liquid. This new mold grows on the outside and it's smelly. Like you smell it when you walk in. This is not what we consider stinky cheese. No, and I honestly I like can't smell, smell it. Anything. Yeah, me too. I feel like yeah, it smells like blue. Like it doesn't blue. When we the open rope it, door smells when you open it fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, I don't feel like. It's not a smelly cheese, and I feel like it's only when you first open it. But like sitting here, I didn't, I don't get any smell. Honestly, okay, let's go around and say what the smelliest cheese we think that we've opened is. I know what mine is. Oh, sorry, that this was a surprise. I didn't. Okay. Yeah, I can. We have my first bit. Okay, okay. I think Gruyere is the smelliest cheese I opened I was because it's in such high. a big quantity, and it is a washed rind, mm -hmm. which sometimes we forget because we think of like the smaller truly stinky inside cheeses. Yeah. But those really smell when you open them, but then they're not as stinky inside because the wheels are so enormous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not like one of, like a boss or something. Yeah, where the, it's like the more surface area. Right. Yeah. I was gonna say Beaufort. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. another yeah, French French really cheese. It just, yeah. Yeah. And it's huge and you're just like, oh boy, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Stick and then you like get it on your hands and you so touch it your apron, it's away. with you all day. <laughs> and, yeah. I was going to say the Mascherin Fruit Bourgeois, which was we, good haven't, we haven't had since you guys have been here, but it was like you put gloves on to touch it because it's oh. it's it's on you. Wow. The smell's on you. That's a common fondue cheese, but also another Alpine cheese. It's so mm -hmm. funny that those mm -hmm. happen to be our smelliest. Alpine but cheese is our stinky. I like the blue cheese really smelly. 
I feel like people oh, get it with the, the portal. Port I like it with the port a lot. Absolutely. I feel like people think of Stilton and they think it's actually really, really strong. strong. And it's actually one of our more mild blue cheeses, wouldn't you say? I mean, not mild, but uh, medium maybe? I'd say mild yeah. in the funk that people, or the salt too. Like, mm -hmm. I think Stilton is very flavorful. But in that funkiness and the saltiness that you get in more intense blue cheeses, mm -hmm. yeah, it is on the more mild side. Yeah. Uh, ladies viewer Perry wants to know, what about Limburger? Yeah. We've, <laughs> never, we've never sold that one. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's stinkier than it, it, it tastes, it's stinkier than it tastes. Right, right, right. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. We need to find something else with the Stilton. What do you say. think about the port? Um, I, I really like it. I like the rosemary with the salt. Okay, the and rosemary. <laughs> You're pulling a Gino over yes, here. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. The port, I just... How long can you leave it soaking in port? Like maybe... Well, for months and someone... Yeah, starts, yeah. yeah. Maybe. You can buy them in little sealed crops. So it's not like just in a deli cup like this. Right. Like. <laughs> um, also, there was there is blue Stilton and white Stilton, right? So mm -hmm. we sometimes carry like a Stilton with cranberries. There's one with mango and ginger. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm... <laughs> <laughs> We're not huge fans of the fruity Stilton, but some people are. Um, and it's just, is it, I think it's just a different recipe. It's Stilton without the bluing. But so people get confused. So it's just important to note that there's blue Stilton. Usually when you just say Stilton, we mean the blue Stilton. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when you say Stilton with cranberry or something, that's then the white Stilton with the cranberry. And it has no penicillium in it. Yeah, they'll usually say like a fruit Stilton. Yeah. If you know what they're talking about. And I did want to say that the Colston Bassett Dairy, they sell to ne Neil's Yard Dairy, which is a special cheese shop in London, and it's like the finest quality as far as what cheesemongers have said. It's This is the one you want to get if this you can is our find favorite. the Stilton. Yeah, it's Stilton. our favorite. Sometimes we get the Cropwell Bishop, and that's really good too, but mm -hmm. this is like the gold standard. Because like you said, it, it uses like the original 18th yes. century recipe, yes. so. Isn't there a third? Maybe not. Well, there are six different six ones. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> Oh, that we get? That we get. Mm, I don't know. Okay, I'll look it up. <laughs> and Colson has been around for a hundred years, and they've only had five, like, head cheese makers the whole time. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's super special. And then, um... What every, every 20 years. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're lifers. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> <Sure. laughs> drink your drink. <laughs> and then Stilton has a natural rind. You'll see it's not wrapped in foil, and that's yes. why it's aged longer. Yes. And then the younger the will, the natural rind makes the cheese more tangy. And then as it'll, they'll start to disappear as the cheese gets older. But you can still eat it, right? And you can still eat it, yes. And then when we're talking about the smells of blue cheeses, that's um, how, you know, because it's made with mold, how do you know when blue cheese is bad? Um, it's going to be like pink isn't a good sign when it's slimy. And the smell like acetone or ammonia. Um, or like a fuzzy mold. Like yeah. if you have it in a container where it's not touching plastic, like a deli container or something, it's already crumbled. If you see like fuzzy white or black blue mold mm -hmm. on it. Run away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, throw it out. And then I also wanted to talk about, if you notice on your cheeses, some cheeses will have the veins and some will have the pockets. And that all comes down to when that cheese was pierced. So if the cheese is um, wet and spongy when it's pierced, it's going to develop the pockets. Mm -hmm. And then if it's more dry and firm, that's when you get the veins. And it's all up to the rest Dip in the center mm -hmm. is very present. I wonder why. I don't know. Maybe it's a lot. Google it. 
<laughs> yeah, right. Tip in Chef's Blue. Um, it's aged a minimum of yeah. a year. <laughs> <laughs> and then on its website, the story goes that um, he was offered, the, the founder of Chef's Cheese Company was offered expired blue cheese, and he thought, like, the from a mind shop, and he thought, like, what would that taste like? And he tasted it, and he liked it, and he goes, what else can we do with this? Like, we aged it longer and all that. So... Let's go for it. Let's it's see. so tangy, and the like I love the tanginess so of it. Uh, with honey, mm. or just like not a spoon. Or yes, <laughs> finger. I sometimes eat it for lunch with a little truffle honey. Mm. Full mm. disclosure. Mm. So <laughs> I feel like it's so different than any other blue cheese because of the acid, the just the tang in it. You don't really get a lot yeah. of other ones. Because we also have the Point Reyes blue, which is a very popular blue from California. That is amazing in mm. its own right. Um, but this this one's tangier, and that one's not as tangy. It just one's almost like savory, like yeah, and drier. This one's still mm -hmm. so creamy, That's true. firm, but it's spreadable. Do you like it? Here are my thoughts. I like the honeycomb. No, I I feel like every time I've tried, okay, I want to try blue cheese. I always try it by itself, and I'm always like, oh my god. But when I eat it with the bread, I eat it with the honey, I eat it with chocolate, it's almost, it's just something salty, like it's enjoyable almost. Mm -hmm. It's not like I'm going to go buy all the blue cheese now, but I mean, I guarantee there are not a lot of people that just eat blue cheese. Right. But because I can eat other cheeses by themselves, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's not, as, it's, this is enjoyable. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, well, look at her go. I know. She's a changed woman. <laughs> I love this one. Let's open up the Chihuahua chocolate. So we chose oh, yeah, yeah. the Chihuahua chocolate. We use these a lot of Formaggio friends. They're local chocolate maker. They make all kinds of fun flavors. We have a ton of really cool holiday flavors right now, but we really didn't think that like peppermint or gingerbread would go well with the blue cheese. So <laughs> we went with the honeycomb flavor because honeycomb just naturally goes with the blue cheese. So chocolate and honeycomb with your blue cheese. See Guys, look at this perfect little bite. I don't mean to brag, but. Ooh. Wait, it needs a sprig of rosemary. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> or like no, a pomegranate piece. Yeah. Nice. Those were hand right. harvested. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> I also translated a lot of French on Google. For blue cheese? For blue cheese. Oh. Yeah. You're welcome too. We only have one French blue. Yeah, we're getting there. It was a lot. The broker has a lot of information, so that'll be fun. That's what I thought was so cool about this plate is it was funny. I was like, Christina, me and Rachel chose the blue cheeses, and she was like, "What? You chose them without me?" And I was like, "No, they kind of just chose themselves. Like, we were just looking at the case and like." okay this is what we have to do and then she went home and started doing her research and she goes oh, okay yeah i see what you mean like these are the big guys in the blue cheese world mm -hmm. we've got all different countries all totally different flavors and styles it was kind of just like this yeah. is what we have to do because i guess we did choose the mind shop but that was just personal favorite yeah, as we when it comes yeah. to american, <laughs> yeah, american blues but viewers yeah. feel they're witnessing a religious cheese experience a conversion oh okay. <laughs> wow, yeah <laughs> Um, I like the mind chef the best, I think. You really? <laughs> saying that oh. after every one. I know. I, I don't think I'm going to say it for the last one. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> we tried the Valpion we'll the see. other day and it was good. Did you like Did it? Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Did she? Okay. Um, do people like it with the port? Do you like it by itself? Oh, the Stilton port? Yeah, the Stilton. I'm going to go back for it again. I'm eating more of the mind chef. <laughs> eat it, eat it all. Mine shaft, they also are shafts blue. They also make a cheese. I don't remember what what's it, what it's called. Is it this not the serendipity, but the one that's mm. ooh, it's the layers. like a cake layer. Really? Layers of cheddar and blue cheese. Oh, um, it's like Huntsman. Huntsman. Yes, Huntsman. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they make a round cheddar. They literally slice it. This cheese is not made together. So they slice a, a cheddar slice. They slice a blue cheese slice and they stack them together. I think it's four slices total and it's just this creation <laughs> that is so interesting. And yeah. we've never carried it, but it looks cool. 
People ask for Huntsman sometimes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it's just so stunning visually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No one has like cake, cheese. I mean, humble fog. Yeah. It kind of looks like cake, but yeah. But and the truffle brie, but yeah, I get what you're saying. And like way. the distinct yeah. layers. Yeah. Oh, we should have said when we were talking about Stilton, the Shropshire blue is very similar to Stilton, mm. but they color it with a natto, so it's orange. It definitely tastes different. I'm not trying to say they're the same, but a lot mm-hmm. of people come in looking for Shropshire, so they ask we always for the recommend. Cheddar blue, yeah. yeah, the cheddar blue, which is not, it has nothing to do with cheddar, but I know. You know, we're all just trying to make our way and communicate with each <laughs> other, so we figure it out and then we recommend the Stilton, and they're usually pretty uh, happy. So. Ladies, you have a visitor all the way from um, Wisconsin named Perry. Hi, Hello. And yes. How did he find Wisconsin? us? Wisconsin. Uh, let's ask Perry, how did you find us? <laughs> hey. And he says, try these blues with pickled eggs. Oh, All right. Well. <laughs> All right. I like a pickled egg. egg. We'll yeah. try that next time. <laughs> Pickle and some eggs, Sarah. <laughs> I'll get right on it. And our friend Fonda is calling this a blue baptism. Oh, oh good call, oh, Fonda. I love that. <laughs> Are we ready to go to France? Yeah, we got a lot of in- info on this we infamous do. cheese, and right? A lot of words that I'll try to pop out. Palette yeah. cleanser, oh, palette everyone. cleanser, palette check. Cleanser. Yeah. Yeah. Palette cleanser, check. Big <laughs> check. I didn't watch Gina Palette TikTok cleanser, video, check. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> We're contemplating starting a Benissimo TikTok and what we could we do. Oh, <laughs> all the cheese, all the cheese songs. Ones. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's See? not you. It's Brie. You know all that. You know. Gina's mm-hmm. in. Oh, man. <laughs> What's that Frozen song? Let it go. Let it go. Let it free. Let it free. I don't know. It could be anything. <laughs> let, let it free. <laughs> or let it grow. Talk about blue cheese mold. Let it See? Grow. <laughs> That's so funny. Mm-hmm. All right. So we are now in southern France with unpasteurized sheep milk. So the other three have all been cow's milk. This one is sheep, and it's from a certain breed. Here we go. La Le- Lacun. Who knows? Do you know how to spell Lucan, it? Lucan, I, I mean, thought. I, know how to spell, I think it's Lucan. Lucan. Yeah, it's L-A-C-A-U-N-E. Yeah. No, I, I go to those it. pronunciation websites, <laughs> and then it's tricky because they'll do, like, Canadian, UK, <laughs> America, and they each have, like, ten different... <laughs> like, which one's right? Yeah, so... There we go. We need to ask Dominique. We have some... Yes. We have some regulars, some French regulars yes. that we need to Last ask. Yeah. Um, it's known as one of the world's best blue cheeses, the king of cheeses. And it's the most eaten cheese in France, which says a lot because France offers a lot of cheeses. Um, this I love one, all three. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. And this one has this legend too. So this story goes: uh, the cheesemaker was hanging out in the cave, saw a pretty <laughs> lady walk by, chased after her, and didn't come back for months. So I don't know what they were doing, but uh, <laughs> when he came back. Uh, he, he was eating lunch, so when he came back, um, his lunch was still there, and for some reason, he decided to <laughs> eat it and liked it, and that's the story. And didn't die. And didn't, didn't die. die I, feel like. I feel like so many stories are like people eating things they shouldn't have eaten, and <laughs> then just discovered something great. What about that fermented shark in Iceland where they like bury it underground for months and then they eat it? Like, how did that become a thing? Very brave <laughs> humans. People did not. They had no fear back in this time. They had no food. They had no yeah, food. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, so that's what it is. You just eat what you can get, and it's like months old cheese and bread, and here we are. And here we are, yes. <laughs> um, it is a protected cheese, and it is produced in a tiny village called Rochefort sur Solzon. Yeah, that sounds good. That's good. Okay, sounds and, good. Um, that was King Charles, right? Yes. In the yes. 1200s? Ish. Okay, I was a history major, guys. I'm really, I'm trying what? here, but I don't remember any dates. <laughs> Ish? What was it, 14? I think so. We don't know. Don't okay, know some sort of time in that time period. Don't who quote that decided? Your <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, who decided that it was just this little village who got the rights to make this cheese? So mm-hmm. that was his decision. Yes. See, this one has huge pockets. Yes. It's so, very blue. Are you scared of this one? Do you have yeah, a piece with a good pocket? Can I like do a close up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We all love pockets. Dresses. <laughs> dresses. dresses with oh my pockets. God. Yes. I like your dress. Thanks. It has pockets. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be too weird and close if I do this. Look at that pocket. Of good cheese. one. Mm-hmm. So the cheese in this town have its origins linked to the collapse of the Combo Combo Plateau. 
So it's a mount. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go with it. I keep looking at the world traveling over. Like, looking at Gina, and Gina's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, that one. Um, so a million years ago, this mountain collapsed, and when it collapsed, it created all these natural like caves. And the caves are special because it allows fresh air to go through this cave and keep the humidity above like 90% and it's like 10 to 11 degrees Celsius. So it's like perfect. It's almost, it just stays this constant temperature, summer, winter. And this is where they age their cheese. Um, It holds up to 300,000 cheeses. That's 1.4 million a season, which is crazy. Real? Yeah. Yeah. Mo- okay, so with Roquefort, there's different, um, there's seven main companies that make the cheese. The one that we are trying today is Roquefort Papillon. Which means butterfly. Huh? Yes. It's mm-hmm. only French I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it gets its name because like, you know, a butterfly starts from like a caterpillar and then it grows, in, you know, the cocoon and it comes Oh, out really? Is yeah. that real or are you making No, it's Oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. It's like a story we were yeah. telling ourselves. Yeah. Okay. And so that's so the butterfly, <laughs> so like the cheese. So that's beautiful. Yeah, it is beautiful. And so other Roquefort companies, they get, okay, so, you know, the mold, Penicillium Roqueforti, um, it, other companies have it in the soil. So they take the bread, they take bread, you help me out on this, they take the bread, they put it in the cave, and it grows mold. And then, mold. yeah, and then it gets into the soil, and so when they start to age the cheese in the cave, the spores will get into the cheese and then... What do they call that? Ambient mold? Yes. Yes. See, I know yeah. things. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so this company, Papillon, they do like all in-house. So they have their own bakery. They make their own rye bread. And then they make 300 loaves every year. And then it's like crusty on the outside, but they keep it like moist inside. And that and they inject it with the, their own recipe. And then it starts to mold. It takes about 40 days. And then when I was reading about it, it said, when the moon is full, the bread is ready. <laughs> and so then they cut into it, and then they take this mold inside of the bread, they grind it up, and they sprinkle that on the cheese curds. And then they make they do their thing with you know, the, rest mold of it. And the rest of it. Yeah. And I think that's like, it's so cool when it's like all in-house, you know, just like we make our own, like, can you imagine being a baker of like they don't eat your bread, they wait yeah. till it gets moldy and, and I'm then pretty they sure use it in cheese. Like yeah, and I'm pretty what? sure they like over bake it so the exterior gets like really black and crusty. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be a good baker. <laughs> <laughs> well, some poor baker got fired for being bad at his job. And they're like, there's hope. I'm applying now. I have a job for you. <laughs> Um, the be- the business has been around since 1906. It's a family business, and the cheese is organic. I almost forgot that. Oh, yeah. no. So the company was a pioneer in the French organic movement. Have you even tried it? No. <gasps> you have to eat it. It raw sheep smell. Here it she is, goes. It's an experience. See, this one is like what I call I, I don't know the right word like a savory blue cheese, like mm-hmm. more like not as citrusy. Like, yeah. Is that what you mean? But it does have that like piquant flavor to yes. it. It's like hot, like spicy hot Burns. on your tongue. That's kind of what Gorgonzola Picante, like not as intense because it's callous milk. Yeah. So it's wow. a little different, but. Wow. You love How does it. that feel on your tongue? Tell us your full experience. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's almost um, like spicy. Yeah. And then uh, numbing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a little numbing, yeah. Like Szechuan peppers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And this Which I know that because I used to work in a spice shop. And um, <laughs> we used to take the Szechuan peppercorn, you eat that, and you have the smoked salt, and then it was like this whole experience for customers. But anywho. That is something. Yes. It's aged a minimum of three months, but no more than a year. And sometimes you can see on the side where they've poked it. Mm-hmm. It almost kind of, mm-hmm. maybe it's in my head, but it's kind of, I, I, like, I taste like bread, like yeast like mm-hmm. yeah kind like of the yeasty mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. flavor great with the olives there's a lot going on with it great with the olives mm-hmm. yeah um and roquefort was the first um aoc the first protected french cheese in 1925. oh wow yeah which is pretty crazy and um, also, when you're transport, when they are transporting the milk from the farms to to make the cheese, 
usually you put it in a big tanker truck, like with cow's milk, you put it in a huge tank. But for Roquefort and other sheep's milk cheeses, they have to use these, like, um, I think they're like, I don't know how many liters they are, but they're like these big stainless steel tanks. And they're smaller, though, than the huge tanker truck. Like and one they, of our milk tanks? Yeah, that? exactly. I'm gonna go look that up. <laughs> sure. I'm just kidding. I'll get it. Okay. It's right here. Please hold. Oh my She'll do it. Technical. Like, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, like this, but like longer. You know, like twice. Like the, yeah, yeah, but exactly like that with the with the yeah the lip around the edge. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because the fat globules in sheep's milk are like more sensitive. They're bigger, I think. So there's more fat in sheep's milk, so that they will break up easily. And you don't want that to happen before you make the cheese, because then it's going to separate and you're going to have issues. So that's why they transport it that way instead of the big tanker trucks. So, and that's the way we used to transport cow's milk also, but oh. then it was just like the tanker trucks were invented. It's like, why not fill the tanker, you know? Because cows make so much milk. Right. Exactly. Cows make so much more milk than mm -hmm. sheep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it also doesn't have a rind, right? This, mm -hmm. you show oh, yeah. This oh, this yeah. is um, in foil too. This comes in the foil also. It mm -hmm. comes in half wheel. To us, comes in little half wheel. That's why there's foil on this one side. It just comes in a half piece. And it takes 4.5 liters of milk to make a wheel. I like knowing how many liters go into That's it. That's okay. Yeah, because it's a lot. You don't think that much, but it's crazy. Has anyone tried any of the fig almond cake yet? Yeah, I just did. It was really good. You tried yeah. it with the that cheese? Was, that was Rachel's contribution to the plate. Got it. Yeah, I, to be spoon. honest, I like the date almond, personally, but the fig almond is really good. And it's great with Stilton, I think. That's like a pairing that I always recommend to people. But any blue cheese. Mm -hmm. No, right, let's see. You can have it. Okay, thanks. Sarah doesn't like it. <gasps> she took the whole piece of Stilton. <laughs> wow. Here, take oh, it. Yeah, it's right there. Help yourself. <laughs> um, what was the other thing I was going to say? Oh, so even though the mold, the Roqueferti mold, doesn't produce penicillium, it has lots of anti-inflammatory properties. So back in the day, like when people would get hurt on, out in the fields, they would s rub it on their wounds. Blue like, cheese? Yeah. It's awesome. Or the mold. I wasn't clear. <laughs> <laughs> hey, start over. <laughs> so the Roqueferti, uh, the penicillium Roqueferti mold. Okay, where do they just get the mold? From moldy things <laughs> oh. like from the moldy bread bread yeah so they just knew that like rubbing mold on their wounds would save them i don't know how I mean, to I don't do know that, that actually <laughs> works we don't know we didn't do it you know there's not a there's, there's only just, one way to find out say. yeah <laughs> i do have a wound from the meat machine so my mom said to spit on it that's what was her cure <laughs> yeah. for just spit on it i'll be fine spit windex on it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's all good so our friend perry wants to know has anyone here milked a cow goat or sheep no. no. I, <laughs> I would if I was given the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would. My wife has, so that's something. Okay. <laughs> She's in the background. No. She's <laughs> our live studio audience. She's in the back, so. Live studio audience. And then she had, what was her, what was it, a sheep or a goat? Oh, yeah, she had a sheep and her name was Sarah. Yeah. Sarah the sheep. <laughs> I love that. That was my favorite story ever. It's like I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> she named the sheep after you. Yes, she, she did. Yeah, but she didn't know, but she did. <laughs> and you're awesome. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, this one is, um, I mean, I really like it. It's strong. I've heard a lot of people using it for, like, call it the rope for a dressing. Like, instead of a blue oh, cheese yeah. dressing, mm -hmm. it's like a rope for a dressing. Mm -hmm. I feel like it would be so strong, but the creaminess yeah. would be really nice in a blue cheese dressing. That's true. Yeah. Is there other blue cheeses with sheep's milk? Yes. Yeah. Rozier. Is she? Rozier Blue? Yeah. Is it There's stronger a too? No, rope for a stronger. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I oh. made a, what did I make? Um, I actually think this was for our French pop-up dinner. It was that sounds not fun. Told, it was not totally loved by everyone, but I really liked the idea. <laughs> <laughs> I know I did a blue, I did a rope for, maybe it was, no, Saint Agur. Mm -hmm. I did a blue cheese panna cotta topped with wow. a port fig 
sock. Yes. That's fancy. Yes, yes. please. And people yes. were like a little confused by it. Like, this is dessert? I'm like, yes, please just go with me here. <laughs> <laughs> Take a leap. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But I whipped it into a panna cotta and the texture was so nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Santa Gur is a double cream blue. So they added, they add cream to it to make mm-hmm. it extra creamy, much like a double cream brie, but then it has the penicillium from 40. So it is blue and it is great. And it's what we stuff our blue cheese olives with that mm. we usually put so in our martinis. Mm-hmm. Oh, I have a question for Gina. Mm. Mm. Uh-oh, there's <laughs> chewing. I took a bite. <laughs> Do you not get chunks of blue cheese floating around in your martini? Mm-mm, never falls out. It never falls out? Never. That's my. That was my worry. Rachel's mm. like, should I stuff the blue cheeses, the stuffed olives for mm-hmm. our martinis? And I was like, mm, no. Never. Mm-mm. Never. Okay. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. They're in there. Mm-hmm. It's good. Okay, okay good to know. So we need to do that next time. Yes. So yes. I was okay. told. Yeah. Question: Do we know the most popular blue cheese used on burgers? Because burgers and blue is such a good idea, or steak Ooh. and blue Ooh. is a good idea. Anyone know the most popular one used? I don't. The smoky blue mm-hmm. from Rogue Creamery. People seem to really like. Mm-hmm. I feel like if you go to a restaurant, they can buy blue cheese crumbles from their distributor. And who knows what that is? <laughs> like blue cheese crumbles, what is that? Mm-hmm. And nobody, mm-hmm. I'd say probably nobody knows. Yeah. And it's just kind you of could probably see, blue. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's just blue cheese. Like I would do Saint Agur or Mine Shaft if I had to choose. Mm-hmm. Mine Shaft, I think, would be good on a burger. And I love the stuff thing. It would stay That's crumbly. True. Well, maybe yeah. if you like crumbled it and mixed it into the meat, the burger meat. Ooh. So you get little pockets. Oh, like little blue cheese pockets. Surprises. I appreciate like that. Mm-hmm. Surprises. Yeah. 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 So Mama, who's kind of one of the divas, just chimed in on text. She recommends oh something, but now it just went away. Uh, shafts as well. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Go Mama. Blue cheese butter, super popular and super um, easy to make. Uh, we used to make blue cheese butter all the time for the fillets when I worked at the marine yeah. room. And it was just, you take, I think we did like 75% blue cheese and 25% oh. butter. Huh? Like ratio. Oh, nice. uh, I always preferred a softer blue cheese. So mm-hmm. St. Agar was perfect. We did use mine shaft a lot. Um, we used, um, what's the other one? Saint-Agur. Can't think of it. No, no, no. just another Maytag. 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 Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And you just get, let the blue cheese get to room temperature, take the butter, whip it in um, the mixer if you have one, and then add the blue cheese. And I used to even then strain it like through a mesh strainer so that it was perfectly oh, smooth. No. And it was perfectly one color. You know, we made the mistake once of trying to do Shropshire, which was <laughs> like this ugly <laughs> <Yeah>. brown <laughs> color. <laughs> but it tasted really good, but. The softer the blue cheese, the better it's going to be in your blue cheese butter. Okay, that makes and, sense. And I liked the, I guess you could just crumble it and add it to butter, butter, and then you get those pockets, but I loved the consistency of, like, the whole thing was blue butter. Yeah. See, I like a crumbly blue cheese dressing, so I would, like, go for Stilton, but a lot, that's why I always ask people, people are like, they, you know, they want a blue, or they want a blue cheese for dressing or something, and I'm like, you want creamy or crumbly, and then we'll go from there, you want Mm -hmm. mild or bold, you know. And then there are the people that ask for Humboldt Fog, the blue cheese. Yes. (laughs) Misconception. Yes. Yes. Humboldt Fog is not a blue cheese. Nope. It has blue-ish, gray, ash. But people always say that always. Yeah. I like ranch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's Italian. <laughs> that's an island. <laughs> and it was yeah. 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 <laughs> I was reading um, Stephen Jenkins' Cheese Primer, which is like a classic cheese book. If anyone is yeah looking for the cheese Bible, that's it. It's a little outdated, but still wonderful. And he has so many opinions, and I love all of them. Yeah. And what he said about Roquefort was that he would never put it in a dressing because it is a waste of the cheese. And he called Roquefort palate obliterating. That was his terminology. Oh, I like that. So, Good words. Mm-hmm. You know. He likes a gorgonzola in a dressing if you care to know what he likes, but <laughs> <laughs> I just love reading and be like, oh, okay. okay. I, just put it, I mean, I like, guess there are rules. Palette obliterating. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Obliterating. Right. Well, you know. Although we haven't chosen it for last, right? So there's something else we have. We were, 
unsure about the order. Yeah. We yes. really, this is, I feel like one of these where you're trying to, like you said, the cheese you're supposed to eat last, and now you're trying to put it in order with other ones that you're supposed to mm -hmm. also eat last. It's like, how do you decide this? I think we did good with the first few. Mm -hmm. We'll but I guess see what happens here. Yeah. I, guess. I mean, you could argue that the mine shaft is also the strongest because right. it has the biggest pucker to it, but mm -hmm. then we were just kind of the ending, just, well, we'll just see how this goes. Well, normally you would do cow's milk and then, well, I feel like goat and then she, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah, here we are. All right. Here's our <laughs> so here she goes. One, Valdeon. <laughs> we are in Spain. So this one is the one in the bottom right-hand corner, the little square-looking piece that's almost, it's not as, um, like, white as the other ones. It's almost got, like, that gray. Yeah, from the blue tint. Um, it is 80% cow's milk and 20% goat's milk. And it is made in Leon, Spain, at the base of the, here we go, Picos de... Europa, which is a mountain range in Spain. Oh. Oh? Uh-oh. Oh. No, it's strong. I'm sorry. Okay, I just okay. tasted it. <laughs> it's made all year round. It's cave aged uh, for a minimum of two months. And it is made basically the same way as um, Cabrales blue cheese, um, but they're made in different caves. And this is milder because the humidity is different in the two caves. Milder, imagine. Yeah. <laughs> smell it first. It's not stinky, mm -hmm. but it has a smell. Ooh. But I love it. So the this is what I think blue cheese is like. Yeah. The four main blues, if I'm not mistaken, is Gorgonzola from Italy, mm -hmm. Stilton from England, Roquefort from France, and then traditionally Cabrales from Spain, but Baldeon, very similar. We couldn't get Cabrales, so here we are. But, you know, it's it, it still has that piquant, just, mm -hmm. yeah. Cabrales is truly <laughs> palate obliterating. Yeah, it's I know. That's why I edible. Was, it mm -hmm. was funny that he said that about Roquefort, but yeah. it's, mm -hmm. yeah. I have to tell my Cabrales story. Please. Yes. And yes. <laughs> <laughs> I tell it to everyone. Transition. <laughs> no, we're just like here in the shop and there's this little kid and we love the kids that come in and are like, I love all cheese. All cheese is so delicious. It's like, and then this like old man behind him, he's like, have you tried Cabrales, kid? And like his whole like elbow. And it was just like, now in my head, that's what Cabrales is. It is harsh, it's intense, and it's just like, have you tried Cabrales? That's why his voice sounds like that. Yeah, because he eats Cabrales. Like smoker's lung, just yeah. like. Oh my gosh. I don't so think it's so bad. Like, not so bad, but like, I don't feel like it's so strong. It's definitely There's a flavor stronger than this one. This is very strong to me. This is like bro, this is stronger. Not, I'm not right. just like retaining, blown in the face by mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So tell us about Valdeo. Yes. So Valdeo. traditionally, it used to be wrapped in sycamore like maple leaves. However, Ooh. they're not allowed to do that anymore. So now it's wrapped in foil that looks like sycamore <laughs> maple leaves. Well, they can't oh, yeah, import it. They can't import it yeah. with the leaves. I yes. can't reach it, Sarah. Well, I could, but my long is around. And the leaves were meant to so allow the bacteria to still penetrate the cheese the and foil. maintain moisture. That's funny. It looks like... The foil looks like leaves. You know, funny. they're doing what they can. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not allowed to because of the FDA, like importing yes. to the yes. US. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Um, it is a protected cheese. And it has won awards. So uh, it won in 2015, it won the Silver Award for the world's best cheese. And I think 2021, I think, because it just happened like November, early November, I think they also won the Silver Award. And we, we should have mentioned that um, Rogue River, which is another blue cheese, mm -hmm. won like the best cheese, right? World's best cheese. World's best cheese. Two years ago. Yeah. We still sell out of it like within a few days of getting it. And that we're one getting is more. wrapped in leaves. Sarah. We're getting more. They just can't tell us when. Or don't know when. That's but strong. we're getting more. We'll let you know. Though Christina stays. Yeah. <laughs> it is strong. Do you guys try it with the honey? Is, but I'm Did you try it with the honey? Blown with the honey? Away by try it with yeah. the honey. Like, I'm gonna steal it. you know how OG Red. Crystal is also mm -hmm. very strong and bitter? And delicious. Of course, and fantastic. I know, but and beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's still that punch that this also has. Okay. I'm just like I could eat this. Good framing, Sarah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back with my honey. It's stuff. honestly a little strong for me. Yeah, Rachel, come over here on this side. <laughs> it's not a competition. <laughs> it's always a competition. Mm. 
<laughs> How does everyone like it at home? That's what I want to know. Mm -hmm. so I, I could eat it. I don't know if I want to, but I could. <laughs> In a recipe. There we go. What recipe? <laughs> <laughs> On the spot. Pears and poached like a uh, port in, poached in port. Yes. Oh. I'm yeah. gonna try it with she, everything she on the knew. plate. Or I made these. Um, I think I did it with goat cheese, but you could mix them with like some dates and wrap them in pastry oh, yeah. and bake it and wrap them in bacon. There we go. Mm -hmm. bacon. Whatever. Bacon. Mm -hmm. Usually I do goat cheese and the dates and mm -hmm. bacon. That's what I usually but do too. I think I'll try I like it with blue cheese. cheese. I like blue cheese. I'm open to it. I'll try it next Although, time. Although, well, it, this is, doesn't matter. This is not a recipe class. Because I made it and the blue cheese all leaked out. So I think you have to par-bake the oh, bacon good one. a little bit. Wrapping things in, baking, in bacon and then cooking it is never successful. Okay, there you go. This is from a chef. This is a <laughs> No, <sort of> I <laughs> feel like, and then just, like, you're right. You right. do have to par-cook the bacon. Okay. And I feel like the best way to wrap something in bacon and then cook it so that the bacon is fully cooked is you have to deep fry it. Okay. You don't have to tell me twice. <laughs> <laughs> but if you try and do it in a pan, the bacon doesn't cook evenly. If you, right. the bacon overlaps it all, it just doesn't cook. You try and put Rotten. it in the oven and it just like, the edges get crispy and the inside still rotten. You can't put bacon on a grill, that's never successful. <laughs> Deep fry it. So what I hear you saying is for one of our <laughs> next pop-up dinners, there's going to be deep fried bacon, bacon wrapped dates stuffed with blue, blue cheese. cheese. Baldeon. Baldeon. Stuffed with Baldeon. <laughs> yeah. Baldeon's a favorite. You heard it here first. Really? People like yeah. it? Baldeon is a favorite. Yeah. What? All right. Mm -hmm. Just saying. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What was your favorite? Yes. The mind shot. Okay. Wow. wow. And I'm going to when next time <laughs> I go out to, to eat, one. I'm going to get something with blue, like a burger with blue cheese. I'm going to ask them what blue cheese it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm say yeah. Blue cheese from. I'm like I need to know more. Can I talk to the chef? <laughs> <laughs> I, I've done it before. <laughs> Nicer places will show what the cheese. Is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I only go to nice places. And I <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Anyone else's favorite, Gina? What was your favorite? Tonight, I'm going to go actually with the row four. Oh. Mm. I'm loving it. I love it with the olive. Love it with the gin. Mm -hmm. It's good. Mm -hmm. Rachel? I like the port and stilton. Oh, oh you're doing yeah, the port Yeah, I really like okay. it. So I mean, my chapter is usually my favorite, and it's not that it's not my favorite anymore. But, but tonight. I'm surprised with the mm -hmm. port and the stilton. Really good. Sarah? The plain stilton. Plain I took the rest right. of Christina's. And usually yeah. our favorite is my check because we're all yes. yeah. 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 Four mongers, four choices. Yeah. All good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I love it. What about the cookie, though? Oh, yeah. We're going to eat the cookie. Ah, the Italian oh, the cookie. cookie is a different flavor. Oh. Okay. What's yours? Peach. Ooh. Oh, that one's really good. Yeah. We have I lemon. Ours is lemon. Mm -hmm. What other flavors were there? No. I think it's peach, though. Oh, I think so peach, oh, hair. Apricot. And yeah. apricot. Apricot. Sure. Sorry. Yeah, apricot. Sorry. Wow. Smell it. Lies. It smells really good. Does this one smell? Not as good as that one does. I mean, this one smells like try lemon, the cookie. But when you try something with apricot, you don't always expect oh, it to smell so real. Oh, well. Ooh. There was pear, too. Oh. <laughs> there you go. There's a piece. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love them all. It's a oh, nice wow. crumbly, like, That's shortbread. Good, right? And we sell these cookies at Benissimo Del Mar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. We have a second vote. Brandon loves the Stilton. Yeah, mm -hmm. another Stilton vote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, have you ever seen Stilton get incredible? No. Me either. Mm -hmm. I was that. Mm -hmm. Good talk. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I made it spreadable and put it in my olive in my martini. Look at oh, you. you like You're thinking ahead. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. Very progressive. Mm -hmm. very. <laughs> Recipe is by Christina. She's, she's converted. She's a convert. Can I take mm -hmm. this time to promote our cocktail class I was just coming up say, in February? What's coming up next, <laughs> oh, Rachel? Oh, yes. What is next, Rachel? What's the date? Um, okay, the 12th. Saturday, February 12th. We were going to do it. We were going to do a Galentine's. Um, Sunday before Valentine's Day on the 13th, but that's Super Bowl Sunday. Ugh. How dare they get in the way of our plans? But because <laughs> Valentine's is always the day before Valentine's that people yeah. weren't aware, and that's for your friends and you celebrate your love of them. Yeah, pioneered by Leslie No, but Parks and Rec. <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna do it on the 12th, and our leader is gonna be. This cocktail over here. Ooh, who made Rachel? Well, we're all gonna participate. Yeah. And we're just gonna drink. Out. She's gonna. <laughs> yes. 
So we're gonna do, I think, three cocktail pairings with cheese. We're gonna try to use some local companies like Sipwell Wines, local nice. woman-owned wine business, um, stuff like that. So it'll, it'll be, be virtual. Fun. You'll get a cheese plate and a cocktail kit, enough for two people. That's so fun. Yeah, so you'll be able to make the cocktail yes. at home. Pair it with cheese plate. And if you have a creme brulee torch, it's extra points. We're gonna char some rosemary. It's gonna get really exciting. <laughs> so in. get one if you don't have one. <laughs> Very important. I'm in. I'm in. Our next romance with friends, I believe, is January. Yes. And it's what gonna be stinky cheese. My second favorite cheese. <laughs> so this is. And when we say stinky, I know we were talking about a bunch of alpine cheeses being stinky. Mm -hmm. I think we'll stick to the soft ripened wash rind cheeses. The floss, mm -hmm. I consider camembert to be very stinky. Mm -hmm. um, what do we have right Oma, now? Like Taleggio, mm -hmm. Oma, Hooligan. Hooligan, we'll, we'll try and do all different countries, really get everything. Mm -hmm. And when you take the lid off that plate, it is Woo. gonna be a waft of yes. funk. But it's gonna be delicious. They taste, so they, they, they smell taste amazing. worse than they and taste. They taste. <laughs> and they taste delicious. <laughs> Which is funny because it's like we taste with our noses first, but you know, they're great. So that's a wrap. You're now a blue cheese lover. Yeah. Ish. What were you? Were you converted? What are your? I feel like you need yes, to have the last I word on the takeaway. <laughs> it is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, cheers, cheers and happy holidays, oh, yeah. right? Okay, we'll do two. Here two we go. Cheers, two cheers, cheers, cheers. Double fisted. It's the time. Good night. And to all a good night. As More they Christmas say. music. <laughs> Are you gonna drink your drink? You're good. <laughs>